Welcome to Nerd House Geeks. Uh, .NET Core 5, Part 5, Online Ordering System. Uh, uh, we're building Easy Shop 242. And this is uh, uh, an online shopping system designed for uh, to be used in the Bahamas. And um, I have a client down there that wants me to build a system and I figure let me make a video of it. So here's what we will cover in this video. This ought to be a little bit fun. <laughs> uh, we're going to touch what is the Azure Reddish cache, get an explanation of that. We're going to demo of creating an Azure Reddish cache. And then we're going to be touching on adding stackexchange.redis nougat to the .NET Core 5.0 uh, application. And then we're going to see an example of lazy initialization. And uh, then we're going to write some test code. So we're going to connect to Azure Redis and send test information up there. And then uh, uh, we're just going to end it by adding uh, the EU general data protection regulation that is supported in ASP.NET Core. So you're just going to get a quick stub out of how that works. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going to get started here. So, all right, let's get it started. Okay, so we're back to the Easy Shop uh, 242. Um, so at this particular point in time now, I'm getting ready to take us to that next section where uh, the business logic requires us to add these orders. Now, I'm getting ready to set this up that when you put your orders in here, you know, they'll stay cached here until whatever. But it will start order taking those orders and put them into the red the reddish cache. And this is where it, is this is what I want to use the the reddish cache for for um, getting all this information prior to putting it in the database and definitely spends and when you hit submit order that will be the process that takes all of the reddish cache information you have here um, and this won't be submit order this will probably be a review so it will take you to another screen that says review and then submit and that will be all be read from the reddish cache before we hit submit and then the business logic is going to start sending the information out and and doing notifications so I I I'm not sure if this is going to be the final decision but um, this is where we're going to get involved with Redis cache I'm gonna to have to also get into uh, the database structure of what's gonna store these orders when it all happens so um, I kind of have some database structure there but haven't hit it all fully yet so uh, that's the idea here we're gonna be building this list and this list will um, uh, be talking to a reddish cache in the background Azure reddish cache and that's how all this play into it so all right now it's time to talk about reddish red redis redis <laughs> So with that said, what is Redis? And Redis is an open source in-memory data structure store used as a database, a cache, and a message broker. Why are we going to use Redis? Because in-memory databases are able to store and react to changes in your data in order of magnitude faster than a database. And we're going to be using this in our application because we want to take advantage of the raw, the, the raw speed advantage enables in-memory database, databases to address a different set of use cases like intelligent caching, accelerated user experience, and adaptive track for sh shape, shaping. So that's where we're going to get into this Redis. So the first thing we're going to do is create our Redis, Redis cache in Azure Cloud. 
So what we have here is my Azure portal. And I'm going to quickly step through how to create a Reddish cache, Azure Reddish cache. So we go here to create resources. Boom. And we put in Azure uh, Reddish. Ah, there we go. Azure Reddish, Reddish cache. And then you click on create. Now, if you look here, this gives you all the tiers that you could use. Um, some you can use basic. Uh, I'm gonna select C, standard C1 for my, for my tier. But you can totally use basic for development and testing. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna be using the uh, C1. So right here, you put in your resource group. Now I've already created this cache because it takes a while for a cache to be generated. But in here I entered my name. I'm not gonna finish it all the way. You have to pass all these criteria. Let's put my name in Reddish cache. Select your location. Then you hit, uh, go to the ne next tab here, networking. You want it to be a public endpoint that's what we want here not private uh, and um, we're doing using Reddit cash for six is in preview um, leave this unchecked uh, this reddit cache does have TSL TS TLS and because I'll be using uh, stack exchange to communicate with this uh, stack exchange um, uh, can integrate with Reddish Cache through TLS. This is Microsoft version of it and not all clients can interact with TLS. And so if you have one of those clients that doesn't, then that's when you select this. And then we'll hit uh, Creating Review. And this will give you everything. And in your case, you'll hit Create. But because I already have a Reddish Cache, I won't. I'll just click home and then go to the cache. It takes several minutes for it to do and um, you just be patient and they'll, it'll get through the end. So I'll just click on home right now. So here's the easy shop uh, Reddish cache that I've already created. We'll just go into that. Ta -da. And so this will let you know everything about Reddish, the memory usage uh, and uh, server load and the next thing we want to do here is, so we're going to want to go ahead and look at our access keys okay so this here is an example of the access keys and so the let me explain the the keys that I will be using, of course, will be the Stack Exchange Redis. And the primary and secondary is important for you to know how that all works. So let's say you start off with the primary keys, which makes sense that you do for this connection string for the Stack Exchange Redis, which is a NuGet package that we're gonna import into the shopping project. And so if for any reason this is compromised, this allows you to change this connection key and then have this, this connection key be used until you regenerate another one and switch back to the primary. So I just want you to get a look of what that looks like. You'll be hit clicking on the copy when we get there, but I'm not gonna show you these keys. I just needed you to get a good understanding of what it looks like. Now, I just want to make a point here about stack exchange .red, uh, Redis. This is a NuGet package. And the reason we're going to use that connection string is because Azure Redis um, has uh, TLS implemented. And so not all clients are compatible with that. That's kind of Microsoft Azure's 
thing. But Stack Exchange is okay with uh, that protocol and integrating securely with Azure um, Redis. So that's why we're choosing that. If, again, in the previous videos, there was an option to say non-TLS, um, and you really have to consult your client about that. But that's why we're gonna get ready to take this particular NuGet package. I think that's important, I'm not too sure. But anyway, let's get into it. All right, let's take some time and just uh, go through the features of Redis. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get this in. Okay, the features of, of um, ex uh, Stack Exchange Redis, sorry. <laughs> It's a high-performance multiplex design allowing for efficient use of shared connections from multiple calling threads. So the Stack Exchange uh, .redis NuGet package, um, it is designed to be multiplex and shared between multiple requests. Uh, what that means is the central object the, the central object in StackExchange.Redis is the connection multiplexer class, all right? In the Stack Exchange Redis namespace, this is the object that hides away the details of, of multiple servers because the, multi, the multiplexer, the, because the multiplexer does a lot. It is designed to sh to be shared and be re reused between calls. So that's what that multiplex design means. I didn't know it. I had to go check that out. <laughs> so that's something I learned. Um, of course, the abstraction over Redis node configuration. The client can silently negotiate multiple Redis servers for robustness and availability. Uh, convenient access to the full Redis feature set. Uh, full dual programming models, both synchronous and asynchronous usage without requiring, without requiring sync over async uses of the TPL. And support for Redis cluster. Probably not gonna touch on any of that unless this application becomes super amazing. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk quickly about the installation. The Stack Exchange Redis can be installed via the NuGet packet, NuGet UI, uh, as Stack Exchange Redis, which I'm getting ready to demo, or via the NuGet package manager console by typing it in and uh, install dash package stack exchange dot Redis. Uh, and once again, I want to touch on you will not see what my connection strings are, my primary connection strings are, uh, but I'm gonna, when I'm putting this part of, of the connection string in, I'll make it clear that that's what this is. And I've explained that the primary is what you go with, but if you feel like you're compromised, you can switch out your stuff to the secondary and you know, and then get a new primary and go from there. All right. Okay, I guess we uh, get started by adding NuGet's package manager. Uh, browse, control V. Let's get it. There it is. Big moment. And it's going to pull in all these dependent. Okay. And so Stack Exchange is the latest and greatest, latest stable version. Yes, we want to go ahead. So we'll go ahead and uh, now we have Stack Exchange. Beautiful. All right, so what we're going to do is go to Easy Shop and we're going to opening up the project properties okay and we're going to add another key value and this will be that there is our easy shop 
uh, database connection string. The, uh, so now we're going to create. And of course, I have the connection string copied here off camera. And I will go ahead. Put my connection value in there. It showed some of it. So now we have, so we have the ASP.core environment variable, uh, the connection string, and the Redis connection string. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and save that and close that. Now, if you remember from our previous videos, um, that becomes an environment variable which is stored on my dev machine in this launch setting.json. But what that allows me to do is get environment variables and because this is going to Azure, in Azure we have a place where we can set our environment variables and this too will go in here. And so I will replace that string name with this one and that will serve up my connection string. <laughs> to to Azure so it's a little quick little tidbit right there so right now we're gonna get ready to connect to Redis cache and this is going to um, we're gonna go through Stack Overflow so I mean not Stack Overflow Stack Exchange dot Redis we're gonna use that to connect this and you're gonna see an example of lazy Initially, okay, so for testing purposes, I'm gonna put this code in the shop controller, and that's where we uh, so we have this index page showing up with um, the grid. Okay, so what we're gonna do here lazy uh, connection. Uh, equal new. So this is the lazy initialization and the uh, connection flexor. Uh, that from Redis Cash Exchange and that uh, you remember when we got into that in the previous video uh, about the multiplexer and so what the lazy initialization does is it's uh, essentially lazy loading but um, let's see what I have right here so lazy initialization of an object means that it is, its creation is deferred until its first use uh, the reason why we use this lazy initialization, initialization is primary the use is to improve performance avoid wasteful computation and reduce programming memory requirements Alrighty. Now, sometimes I mess this up so Get this right. So we uh, let's put you right here.
Okay, and so what we want to do is get the uh, Redis connection string. And for us, and I, I don't know if you remember when I explained it, that we're going to keep that in the environment variable. And now we're going to go and let's see. We turn, I catch with a little squiggly line there. Uh, connection multiplexer dot connect and this is the register connection string that we want oh did I take too much sure did okay so this 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 lazy initialization when we need it that's when it's gonna fire this all off and we do this so that uh, for the reasons I stated uh, okay all right let's continue on with this example all right so uh, let's see where I'm at so now we're going to reach out to Mm -hmm. I'm going to call this Redis Cash Camel Case it. And it's equal to a lazy. Yes. This is where we get the database. Now, um, go ahead and want to create a model for, so we want to display this on the screen and we're not going to do everything tonight, but we're definitely going to establish that we've connected with the Redis cache. So we're going to cache model. And I think I saw this code example, uh, I don't know, maybe Stack Overflow, um, uh, some code example. And I was like, huh, let's give it a try. Let's give the old girl a try here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is create two public strings, okay? And this is gonna show the number of connected clients and this is going to show you the log of all the calls we've made, okay? <sighs> and that's it, and we put that here in our models. That won't survive, we'll get rid of that one day. <laughs> so here we are, getting ready to connect to our database. And let's get my blueprint out here. So we're gonna create that model here. And it's gonna be var, ha, ha, ha. var, yeah, equal, what did I name the darn thing? Oh. That won't work unless you instantiate it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to instantiate, instantiate the object. Of course, we get the squiggly lines because it hasn't been included yet. And that's where we have it here in the models. And so this whole thing is going, um, I'm going to add this to the bottom of our, our current order page. And it's going to be a table and just going to show you uh, the commands we sent. So here we're going to do uh, string builder. And um, what I'm going to do, because 
I already tried this. I'm just gonna do what the pros do. I'm gonna copy the code in here and explain it. Seems to be quicker. Beautiful. What was missed? Oh, string builder. <laughs> yes, text. All right, so we got the string builder here. And so we're creating a string where we're gonna put all this stuff into the log. And in here, we have the reddish cache. And when you send a ping to the reddish cache, it responds by saying pong. And so this year is going to send that to, to the reddish cache. Then this is gonna flush all. And then this is gonna try to get the string message, but we haven't put a message in there yet. So we try to get the string and then we go ahead and set the string, which is gonna be this, uh, which comes directly from the example, but I think it'll be sexier if it say, hello, Shane. Yeah. Now we're saying something here. So we're gonna set the this message to hello, Shane. And then we're gonna get a response. We should get the hello, Shane. And we're gonna stick all our commands in this log. And then we're gonna use this command, the execute client list, um, and stick it all into this model. I guess the model is useless right now until we put it here. And so we're pointing to the shop index page. Um, and so we need to add that model up here. All right, so that's going to be Cache model instead of cache mode. <laughs> cache model. And then I'm going to insert a table right here. This table will show us the values that are in those two fields. So this will give us a list of everything that happened. This is going to show us the list of all the clients because we ask for it, return it as a string, it replaced these command things with we'll stick it right in here. And so what we're saying here is when I come to the shop page, underneath that grid, where's the grid? You did text, did it, did it, JS grid. That's where we'll be building our orders list from because that's configured here in JavaScript. So here we go and we run it. Uh, where do I have my page showing up now? So we're gonna run it. Oops, it should be over here. <laughs> Alrighty, that's beautiful. Shop, same day, three day delivery, we'll do same day. And there it is, it's sent the ping command. Reddish responded with the palm, so we're good. We know we have everything configured, it's talking it's talking. Flush all. Is it okay? We try to grab the message. The response said, there's no message. Then we set hello key to did it. Oh, we didn't actually do this. <laughs> I didn't change this text. Well, that's what you get for Russian copy and pasting. And then um, it said the message was set, but it wasn't set to this. This is just hard coded there. And now we say, go get the message. And the message says, hello, Shane. And this give us the list of all our clients and uh, of, our, of our connected clients. Wow. Now, this was just to make sure that all this connection information, all of this work, 
when we're placing orders now, I'm going to be populating this cache with the orders and then we'll uh, go from there. So we're going to stop there for now as far as dealing with the connecting to Redis cache. Um, so I'm, I'm getting all the setup together before I start really architecting how we're going to be having this relationship be it with um, um, sending information to and making an order and just really going through how people can place an order. And it'll all sit in the Reddish cache um, uh, for the ordering, the viewing, uh, the when we review the order, which reminds me, <laughs> I want to come to this page right now and stop saying, what do you say here, submit order? We're going to review the order. We'll get to that. That's just so the concept is in my head that when we're in the JS grid, it will be adding our orders and then we hit review, we'll read to the cache of all the orders we have in there or orders we, whatever we delete, and then the magic happens. All right. Wow, all right. I'm really <laughs> touching a lot of subjects today. So right now we're gonna talk about the EU General Data Protection Regulation Support in AS, ASP.NET Core, the GDPR that shook the development world until we found out uh, you know, what all we needed to do there. So, ASP.NET uh, provides APIs and templates to help meet some of the uh, the GDPR requirements. Um, I'm going to use their stubbed out examples and just show you how quickly to implement it. Um, uh, we are going to set this up in the startup configuration and configure uh, methods in the start in the startup class uh, so I'm gonna give a quick demo of that and we probably might get to see it work um, all right so all right back to the code so I'm just gonna stub this out real quick um, pretty much a copy paste deal but at least you'll be able to see it I right, know it yeah, I'm not going to do the rest of the stuff, but you, you'll be able to see it work. Okay, so here's how we're going to slap this together here. Okay, we already got our reddish cache going here. And... So before this, we're going to copy this code in here. And uh, this is... <laughs> So what we're going to do here is this is uh, configuring a uh, the cookie policy option. Okay. Now for all of this to work, we must have already included uh, this right here. So we needed this to be here uh, to get all this cookie authentication, all this cookie policy stuff that was in there. As you can see, it goes a crap. Anyway, control Z. So that's there already. And I tested it earlier when I tried to write the code. Uh, and this determines uh, whether the user consent for a non-essential cookie is needed for the given request. Okay. And this section is what requires that. So this is a stubbed out API that they kind of threw together for us. Another thing that we have to include. Ah, da -dun -dun -dun. I use cookies policy. Put right after the status, status, status file here. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna 
add a partial view. So we're going to put it in shared here. And OK. And this is the cookie partial consent. Um, add. So I say view a new item. I'm going to go view and I can change it to how I want it to be, right? Get the name it. Ah, cool. There we go. Boom. I don't need any of that stuff. Now we'll take the uh, we'll take the code sample that they have here. Okay, and so we'll be making a reference to the H using the HTTP dot features. And um, use this space to summarize your privacy and cookie policy. Learn more will send us to the privacy page, which is kind of ready here, right? Yeah, it is. Cool. We don't have any content on it. Now, let's see if it's. Now, I ran this earlier, so this is show banner. And track. So these are the feature APIs. That, okay, so let's head go ahead and run it. And uh, nope, can't run it, silly rabbit. What we're gonna do is stop it because there's an important part to all of this. Yeah, that's an important part. We may have included it, but we need a place for it to pop up and be disturbing. Right here above the body. Okay, so it doesn't matter which page you skip ahead to. It's gonna require you. So what we're gonna do is use a partial here. Voila. And maybe come back and lay that out with some care and concern. Uh, let's just see what it gives us, if it's gonna show it if the last time I run it and said accept it, has that expired? Does it come up again? Oh my gosh, it popped up here last time. That's, I just hit accept. <laughs> and it kind of keeps it stored. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry you missed that one. Uh, Anyway, that is some support for GD, GD, GDPR, but it was, it showed up here underneath, just above here, and I already accepted it. I knew I made a mistake when I did that. Uh, I may come back and take some time and figure out how to show that example again, but uh, yeah, that was a quick stub out for GDPR. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, hey, I know it works now. <laughs> That'd be great for you to see it. Anyway, uh, moving on. All right, so I'm an idiot. So here we already have the cookies consent. It'll be there for several days. <laughs> and I did it yesterday, so it's gonna be there for a while. But what I'm gonna do is clear the cookies. Okay. <sighs> Now you'll get your GDPR. There it is. Yada 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 yada. You can replace this with your text. This will send you to uh, a privacy page. Although I need to change that because I think that's set up for a different framework. And I clicked accept, which put it here. Which is why you couldn't <laughs> see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just wanted to show you it working. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, why didn't that work? That shouldn't be that complicated. Anyway, there we have it. This is the cookie consent. Take something cool from another site or whatever. Uh, this link has to change to our privacy page. Uh, I guess you gotta go to the 
partial page. Yeah, so that's that's a problem. You just, yeah, that's why that was working. You put that in with the right thing. All right, I was just wanting to share that. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, that should have worked. Why didn't that work? I already consented when I was trying it the first time around, so I forgot to erase all of that and put it back in. All right, now we're good. I feel happier now. <laughs> Hey yo! 2021 has begun. Thank you so very much for watching these videos. Like and subscribe if you want to. I appreciate every way you support. Have a lovely day, night, just depending on what, what time it is in your part of the world. What else you want to Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta try the buzz. This is what the hook is talking about. Hulkamania! <laughs> <laughs>